Hi there. My name is Leif. Um, I'm kind of a round-headed, 40-year-old, uh, uh, short haircut, no-shave guy. But basically, uh, I didn't want to come across as some stuffed, uh, stuffed shirt guy, you know, with a tie and an attitude and uh, an opinion about everything. Um, basically, I, I just kind of want to chat with you right now and um, talk about something that's that's pretty close to my heart. Um, well. One of the things I really wanted to talk about was how uh, how a lot of people have a, have a difficulty believing in God, and and um, it's understandable because there's a lot of hurdles. I I had a very difficult time myself believing in God, but over the years, um, things a little little seeds have been sown, and uh, my sister used to drag me to youth group, and I'd listen to the pastor and. Uh, you know, I, I was I was very adamant about being an atheist or agnostic, whatever. Um, but um, still, I would sit down and I, I would do it just to get out of the house. But um, little seeds would be so. You know, I'd learn things like um, how how God provides for us. You know, and uh, I remember when I was a kid, I, I would often read these little stories and stuff, and it seemed always that the family could get by. But then, you know, you look at um, I don't know the Ukraine after the war and and how terrible Stalin treated some of those people and uh, I know estimates are that five million people starved to death and then there's the Holocaust and then there's the Second World War um, my dad lived through the Second World War and I've heard some pretty grim stories and uh, hundreds of thousands of people dying in refugee camps and um, starvation and disease and um, it's frightening really and uh, I don't know if anybody studied the, the the First World War very much. That was a horrible war, you know, living in mud in the trenches and diseases and rats and everything, mold on your food. And, you know, it was just terrible conditions. But um, it, it, it even got worse after the war because a flu epidemic actually claimed more lives than the war did, some 20 million people. And these things are going on. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not as much of a present risk as it used to be, but... Uh, now we have nuclear weapons that can destroy the entire world 200 times over. And, uh, you know, it's really frightening. And um, I walk around pretty much feeling feeling 100%, you know. Um, it doesn't bother me that all these things are around because I do have a faith in God. And uh, right now I just wanted to talk about one of the hurdles that some people have towards being a believer. And uh, usually you start talking to people... Um, about God, and one of the things they first pop up with is, uh, well, I, I don't want to believe in a God that caused World War One, or I don't want to believe in a God that shoots nuclear missiles, or why do so many bad things happen to good people? Why, why do bad? Why does God allow there to be so much evil in the world? Well, first of all, I can say that God has a plan, and you can, you can find it in the Bible. Of course, there are many versions of the Bible, and uh, some people have to choose which one they which one they want to look at, and uh, it's it's a rocky path. But I, for one, would like to be here to uh, to help anybody through it that might be interested in doing so. But uh, let's get down to the question of why does so much evil happen? And uh, really, I see us as created beings. I mean, I've I've gone over debates of. Uh, whether we evolved or whether we were created or anything. And, um, you know, even if we did evolve, it's possible we were created to evolve. And um, there's a lot of things about that, but uh, that's that's to be discussed in possibly later or possibly in another video. But um, the fact is, uh, the fact is in my mind, and, and I hope in your mind one day, is that uh, we were created, and we were created as God's children. And you have to think, you know, if you have a child, what what would you rather have, a child or a robot? Um, you know, most people are going to say child. Some people think robots are neat, but um, you know, a robot can never love you back. And if you ever if you ever experienced having a child, you will know what it's like. I've never experienced it, but um, I have a niece, and um, I just. I love her so much, and um, I was just watching TV, and, and a man was uh, talking about how 
someone had written him a letter saying their nine-year-old child had uh, died of cancer and they had to watch them die over the course of five months. And, you know, um, I mean, that's just horrible. I think I, I, my niece is seven. And uh, if I think of her, of her passing away before, before a reasonable amount of time, uh, it, it frightens the hell out of me, really. And I'd like to do anything to prevent that. But um, really, you, you just sort of have to leave it up to God, that sort of thing, I guess. You can, excuse me, keep them away from Three Mile Island. You can not, uh, you cannot, uh, not let them smoke or smoke around them. And, not let, uh, not have a microwave in your. I don't know what else you could do to prevent cancer. A lot of green tea, maybe, but um, you know, really, in the end, it's it's up to chance, and uh, some people get the short end of the stick. But uh, what it is, what what I'm trying to say, is that um, God made us as His children, created us as His children, and um, because we're His children. He doesn't want us to be robots, and and something robots can't do is have a free choice. You know, a robot can can go ten feet ahead and turn right or turn left, but that's just whoever programmed him. You know, and uh, he'll never do anything other than what he's programmed. Uh, at least not in present technology. But um, your child um, has the choice. You have the choice. Uh, you can turn right or left. Um, you can say, okay, well, I have a gambling problem and that's not my fault, so I'm going to go get a gun and deal drugs so I can pay for my gambling problem and somebody gets killed and that's a horrible thing. But the thing is, is that that person had free choice to, to not, to sell drugs or to gamble or to sin or to, you know, or to do things. And, um, you know, it just, just what it boils down to is that, um, I mean, even car accidents, a person, a person has a choice. Do they want to be, be a better driver? Do they want to not use their cell phone while they're driving? Do they don't want to wear their seatbelt. Um, we got this choice, and, and the fact is, is that we can choose good or evil, good or bad, whatever you want to call it. And when God sees us as his children choosing good or choosing to worship him, um, that just means he's going to love us all the more. And, um, you know, uh, I, I don't, I'm not a qualified pastor, and I don't have exactly all the degrees or anything to talk about that too much, but um, I'm going to level with you. I have a serious mental disorder. And because of that, um, sometimes I kind of shy away from publicly declaring my faith and, because I'm worried people say, oh, well, he's just crazy. Uh, but the fact is, um, for the past 10 years, I've been in remission of my illness. And it's because good people, great people, uh, helped me. My family helped me. Um, I stayed on my medications. I did all this. And um, I really feel that uh, developing a faith in God is something that gives me the inner peace to do the right thing. And I don't always do the right thing. But um, when, when you try hard and, you know, even when you screw up, you show people that you're trying hard, um, life gets so much better. And, and I feel happy. I feel fulfilled. Uh, one of the things I've done is try to write a book about um, my journey uh, from, from kind of a overachieving young kid with uh, not much of an opinion of anything, not, not much of a good opinion of anything but myself, through my teen years and doing all sorts of crazy things, everything from drinking and smoking and gambling and um, I think there's even a little bit of drugs, but uh, not a lot, um, thankfully. I never got into anything heavy. Um, experimented, yes, but uh, this was my this was my journey, and the fact is, that all those things. I can lay before the feet of God or feet of Jesus, if you if you want to say that, and uh, He'll forgive me. He forgives me, and there you go. Um, if I'm forgiven, I can get on with my life. There's people here, uh, humans, earthlings, whatever, that won't forgive me, and um, they're just simply showing that they're not uh, they're not God. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, when I was sick, I hurt people. And uh, 
they don't want to get hurt again or they don't trust me or whatever reason and I can understand that but the important thing to me is that I'm still friends with Jesus and God and yeah um, it used to kind of freak me out when I heard people talk about Jesus um, you always heard hear the phrase Jesus freaks and all that stuff and really um, it's a lot more somber and holy than than one would think uh, I don't know if anybody's ever been in a Catholic church or well, I, I go to a I, I go to a Catholic basilica, which is basically a church that the Pope has been to. Because once the Pope's been to it, you can call it a basilica. And to me, it's such a beautiful, peaceful place. And I go there, and I can pray, and you know, I can ask for things, but uh, really, getting things is is more up to me. I think you know, there's there's an old joke. Uh, there's a kid. And, he, uh, he really wants this bike, and he tries hard and tries hard and tries hard and does everything good and right and works for his mom and helps her out. And, and uh, he prays hard, and he, and he works his butt off, and he everything does the dishes without asking for money, uh, vacuums the carpet, uh, runs errands for his mom, everything. And all he wants is a bike, so he's praying and praying and praying. And he knows if he's good that God is going to give him that bike, or, or so he thinks. And then Christmas rolls around and, you know, he doesn't get the bike. Kid's devastated. But the next day he doesn't feel so bad because uh, he realized that God doesn't work in that way. God doesn't just give you a free bike all the time. So what he did was he went out and stole the bike and asked God to forgive him for stealing it. I don't know, you can call that funny if you want. But uh, people who know me know I always like to throw a joke in there. But, um, really, it's quite serious. I mean, uh, it can be a long journey to understand God, and it can be a difficult one. Um, I can't imagine somebody who's an atheist and goes into a, a scientific uh, field, I, I can't imagine what it would be like for them to try and find the peace of God that I have, uh, because they're so far deeply ingrained into what they what they believe, what they, what they see and do with their hands and everything, and, uh, you know, um, it's sad, really. I mean, it's wonderful that they make all these uh, advances in modernity and and all that stuff. But uh, the fact is, uh, without God in your life, um, you're you're going to be a pretty you're going to have. I don't know. You you you're just you you're not going to really understand. Like, I I was I was watching this preacher, and he was saying that uh, without good and bad. Without God, good and bad doesn't mean anything. It's just one person's opinion over another. Because Hitler thought it was good to kill Jews. But God knows that it's bad. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm kind of tripping over my tongue. But uh, I just wanted to uh, end this off by one of my favorite passages. Um, this is the really, really big Bible. It comes in three volumes. Uh, what it is, it's called the 23rd Psalm, and uh, I just wanted to share a bit of, bit of it with you here. Here it is. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I just wanted to leave you with that, and uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.